Do you enjoy being a human? Voice assistants are convenient. And your friends are sad because they don't exist. Oh wow, this escalated quickly. Intuitive. Alexa, will you be my friend? Sure. And creepy. And I was human. I am human, still. Crossing more than 4.2 billion devices in 2021, there will soon be more voice assistants than there are people. Speech recognition systems are a natural progression in solving our input-output constraint. We went from using 10 fingers down to two thumbs, and before microchip implants are finally normalized, voice commands are a logical middle step. But as we pursue convenience at all costs, we're also introducing new vulnerabilities into our lives with increasingly more damaging impact. Your virtual assistant can be hijacked more easily than anyone could imagine. Anyone except for scientists, proving one paper at a time how trivial it is to command your digital butler to visit a malicious website, open your garage door, or manipulate your car. I love it when science is used to study privacy and security issues. How can I help you? Or maybe how can I steal your private information? So I'm very happy to show you several research papers proving multiple novel methods of attacking our smart devices. I hope you're ready because this will get heavy very quickly. So let's begin. The wallet proposal would cost $5.42 billion over five years. Did you hear that? Let's try another one. If you didn't notice anything strange, that's on purpose. These audio files were produced by German scientists at the Ruhr University. They are a proof of concept of a novel attack on voice control devices known as psychoacoustic hiding. While you only hear a random speech, specifically, the union said it was proposing to purchase, your device also hears an actual voice command. If you play close attention, you will notice it. But if you just go about your day, commute, or do anything with your brain in autopilot, you'd miss it. Let's hear it from the birds again. Well, you're only supposed to hear the chirping, the machine in your pocket or on your desk also hears this. Play together, it's almost indistinguishable. What this presents is a novel attack vector on voice-enabled devices using the method known as psychoacoustic hiding. Psychoacoustics is a benign field that studies what human hearing can and cannot process based on a range of frequencies, amplitudes, and signal dynamics. Psychoacoustics is used in MP3 music compression to generate audio files that remove parts of the audio inaudible to human ears, thus making the file smaller. Using the same algorithm, the German scientist turned psychoacoustics into an attack vector to modify audio signals and hide transcription inside any audio file with a near 100% success rate. Voice assistants are becoming a ubiquitous part of our daily lives. They sit inside our phones, they wait for us in our homes, they navigate us on our roads. They increasingly control more and more aspects of our digital and physical presence. We trust them with our contacts, messages, emails, or searches. We use them as convenient reminders, task managers, and even put them in charge of babysitting and locking our doors. But all that convenience comes with a price. Voice assistants are incredibly vulnerable. Researchers from the Georgetown University developed a new method of hacking called Man in the Elevator Attack. In this scenario, a loudspeaker in an elevator would play sounds unrecognizable to human ears. During an elevator ride, the victim's device would interpret the sounds as voice commands. The attackers could command the victim's voice assistant to open a malicious website, make a phone call, send a text message, or turn on an airplane mode, all via remote sounds. The researchers also build on the premise of voice quoting. This is an attack where certain words would trigger the same response from a voice assistant as proper commands. For example, cocaine noodles would be interpreted as a voice-activating command, OK Google. This attack could scale significantly to thousands or even millions of devices by playing malicious commands inside video or audio ads on radio, TV, or the internet. We wouldn't be living in a black mirror dystopia if this was the only attack vector on our beloved voice assistant devices. While psychoacoustic hiding is an effective attack, it would be even better if malicious sounds were completely inaudible to human ears. 
So human hearing is pretty pathetic. Our hearing frequencies range from about 31 Hz to about 20 kHz. But the older you are, the worse your hearing gets. Some humans, especially children, can hear sounds above the 20 kHz threshold. But most adults struggle to register anything above 15 or 16 kHz. If you want to reignite your existential crisis, just play the mosquito ringtone. Some years ago this trend went viral, where the children would communicate in higher frequencies that adults couldn't hear. Most of my audience is in the key demo, so most of you will probably tap out sooner than you'd expect. All frequencies above the 20 kHz range are called ultrasonic or ultrasound, and while you can't hear them, our devices can. So naturally, a group of researchers came up with an idea to hack our smart appliances using ultrasonic voice commands. A paper from Zisheng University presented a new inaudible attack vector on speech recognition systems called Dolphin Attack. The researchers were able to hack just about any voice assistant they threw their commands at. Siri, Google Now, Samsung as Voice, Huawei High Voice, Cortana, and Alexa. As proofs of concept, the attacks were able to activate Siri to initiate a FaceTime call on an iPhone, command Google Now to turn on airplane mode, and manipulate Audi's navigation system. Their attacks assumed no device access, no owner interaction, complete inaudibility using commercially available speakers. Dolphin Attack is able to achieve a range of silent hacks. It can command a device to open a malicious website, which installs a malware onto the victim's device. The attack can use phone calls for spying and surveillance. It can populate a phone with fake messages, calendar events, emails, or other information. Turning on an airplane mode can trigger a denial of service. And lastly, the Dolphin attack can conceal itself by dimming the screen and lowering the volume. The only limitation of this proposal was range. Their distances varied from 2 cm to 175 cm. So, naturally, another research group from the University of Illinois picked up the slack and proposed ways of extending the dolphin attack range. Now, let's ask the same question using inaudible acoustics. The United States capital city is Washington, D.C. Using an array of multiple speakers, the attackers were able to use the same dolphin attack method to achieve the distance of about 25 feet. They were able to carry out these attacks from outside the victim's home and bypass voice fingerprinting protections by brute forcing synthesized voice signal of the owner. The dolphin attack uses air to carry the sound waves of the ultrasonic frequencies, which usually means the malicious speaker needs to be within the line of sight. Obstructions within that line can significantly reduce performance of the dolphin attack. Luckily, other materials such as the ones our tabletops are made of can also carry sound. And because the rule, if it exists, it can be hacked applies, a new group of scientists volunteered to develop yet another attack vector. Named Surfing Attack, the new hack can leverage the unique properties of acoustic transmission in solid materials to attack voice control devices over a longer distance and out of line of sight. The new design allows for omnidirectional transmission, multi-round interactions between the attacker and the target device, longer attack range, of course, and lower power requirements. Surfing Attack can instruct the target device to stealthily leak secret information to the attacker. For example, an injected ultrasonic command can tell a voice assistant to relay a two-factor authentication code back to the remote attacker. This two-way transmission is a new addition of the Surfing Attack because the design also contains a tapping device that can capture the relayed information without the victim noticing. Surfing Attack doesn't require any special skill or knowledge, and the equipment used is commercially available for just a few bucks. With these advancements, ultrasonic attacks on voice control devices are virtually unstoppable. It doesn't matter what objects on your desk or what type of material they are made of. Range has been vastly extended to the point you would never be aware of malicious equipment in your vicinity. So, what can you do to reasonably protect yourself against these attacks? Well, the best ramifications are to disable the voice input. Some devices can mute microphones or even cut power to the mics, 
which is effective at stopping both surfing and dolphin attacks. This also defeats the purpose of having voice assistance. The always-on listening feature is the biggest vulnerability, so you should disable it if your device provides that option. Request that all voice commands work only when your phone is unlocked. If you think these attacks require dedication and commitment, don't. Ultrasonic transmission is already widely implemented by the advertising industry for, cross for cross-device tracking. Ultrasonic beacons are constantly playing in all kinds of media from digital ads to movie theaters and commercial banners. They constantly talk to your device to track its unique identifiers and ad performance. This builds on scientific research proving that ultrasonic transmission between air gad machines is entirely plausible. That is, even if your phone is not connected to the internet, ultrasonic beacons can still extract information from it at the rate of 20 bits per second. I have a dedicated video for ultrasonic cross-device tracking if you want to learn more about this topic. The biggest takeaway from this is that voice control devices introduce new vulnerabilities and attack vectors. The more we surround ourselves with microphones, the more exploitation we'll be exposed to. Our voice control devices are equipped with microphones with a peculiar design flaw. Inside the microphone is a diaphragm, which is a small plate that moves when sound waves hit it. For seven months, researchers from Japan and the University of Michigan were studying these microphones and realized that the diaphragm can also be moved by focusing light at it. This is because when the light hits the diaphragm, its movement is converted to electric signals which the device can interpret as a voice command. As a proof of concept, they were able to command a voice assistant to open a garage door by beaming a laser command from outside the window. Realizing that light can travel much further than ultrasounds, they climbed on top of a 140-foot university bell tower and successfully commanded a Google Home device inside another building 230 feet away. When they couldn't climb any further, they took a telephoto lens to beam lasers to another voice assistant more than 350 feet away and still managed to take control of it. This attack worked on Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Facebook Portal, and Apple Siri. Expect virtually any voice assistant to be vulnerable to this. The attackers were able to perform a range of novel attacks, including taking control of smart home switches, opening smart garage doors, making online purchases, remotely unlocking and starting certain vehicles, and opening smart locks by stealthily brute forcing the user's PIN number. Laser attacks are more on the pricey side as far as hijacking virtual assistance goes. The full equipment will cost you north of $350, $550 if you want to use a telephoto lens. But the insanely long range of the attack is worth it. Presently, the defense against this attack is limited. Covering your microphone with a tape wouldn't help, as some microphones are protected with a dirt shield and the laser light still went through. Apple, Google and Amazon would have to redesign their voice assistants from scratch. You can mute your microphone, which would work, but also disable your device's functionality. The command injection makes no noise, but the light beam can be visible. If you can hide your device from outside windows, you might be able to mitigate this attack. However, covering it will not be sufficient as a powerful enough laser will pass through many physical barriers. Enabling speaker recognition will only protect you against malicious activation. Once your device is activated by you, it will listen to the malicious light commands as well. You should use a strong pin, but keep in mind that it can be stealthily brute force by light commands. Voice assistants are not something I want to surround myself with. But being realistic about this, you're more likely to get hacked by opening malicious file in an email attachment or get your credit card details fished on a spoofed website than have your Alexa or Siri hacked. The mass surveillance conducted by Apple, Google, Facebook and the rest of the big tech is a far more immediate concern than hijacking voice assistants. This is where the ultrasound and cross-device tracking is useful and I recommend you learn more about this from my video on this topic. I'll be much more inclined to use virtual assistants if they were open source and respected my user choice and privacy. Mozilla DeepSpeech and Mycroft are trying to provide open source solutions to speech recognition systems. These projects have already matured enough to hit the mainstream, but they would still be equally vulnerable to all the attack methods described in the research papers cited in this video. I would only trust these devices offline and with strong security measures built in by default. When it comes to privacy and security, less is oftentimes more. But if you're looking for a lot more of my content, join my Patreon page where will be instantly flooded with hundreds of exclusive podcast episodes on the topics I present on this channel. If you choose to support me as a fully independent creator that takes no sponsorship or affiliate money, 
you will get even more content from me as a form of gratitude. So what are we waiting for? I'm broke as fuck.